Hey boys and girls, welcome to Art Recycled with Mrs. Hollemeyer. Today, we're gonna make this really cool landscape and it is a jungle landscape. We're gonna learn how to make things look closer to us because they're at the bottom of our page and they're bigger. And then as we go backwards, things are going to look farther away from us because they're moving up the page. And maybe, I wouldn't say in this one, they're getting a little bit smaller, but because we made the flowers in the jungle so big on this level, it looks like the landscape is moving back in space. We're gonna use really simple lines for this. So I typically give my kids this, it's a line brainstorm sheet, but you can see a lot of these lines in this picture, like the zigzags in the sky, or this curly Q wave um, in the ocean, or maybe these kind of rocky lines, kind of like that for to make this rocky texture on the land. So boys and girls, this is also kind of a project on showing kids how to use simple lines to make these more realistic types of things in a landscape. You're going to need your watercolor paints for this. You're also going to need water and a brush. Also a Sharpie or a black crayon, something that won't bleed with watercolor paint. But again, if you want to do this with crayons or colored pencils, you totally can. It may just take a little bit more work to blend the colors. What we're going to do when we paint this in, we're going to paint it kind of like a color wheel so that if the colors do bleed together with the watercolor paints, it's actually going to bleed together to look really good. So with all that being said, let's get started. All right, boys and girls, to get started on our jungle landscape, um, I obviously have a bigger paper here. And if all you have is a regular size printer, white sheet of paper, you know, eight and a half by 11, that's fine. You can just follow along and kind of do the same techniques that I do and your landscape would be just as beautiful. This is a size paper that my third graders use when they, when they do it in class with me. So I'm gonna draw with a Sharpie today. You should probably start with a pencil and then you can always Sharpie it um, after your drawing is done or you can use black crayon when you're finished too. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna divide this jungle landscape into fourths. So how I have my students do that is they start with the top, they take the top of their paper, they fold it down to meet the bottom, crease, and then they open it back up. And then what I tell them to do is once it's back open, I tell them to kind of flatten it. And then they take their pencil and they go over to this side and they mark kind of a dot where the crease is over on the left hand side. Then we're going to take the bottom here and we're gonna fold it up to meet the middle crease. So we're gonna fold up, kind of line it up with that middle crease, fold, open it back up. And now looking at this lower crease, so this one here, I'm gonna flatten my paper again with my hands. I'm gonna take my pencil and I'm gonna go over to where that crease is and I'm going to make another dot. Now this time I'm actually gonna switch over to real pencil because the next step that I typically tell my kids is where this bottom crease is, I kind of tell them to make a dashed line and I tell them to draw lightly because this line is eventually going to get erased. But I'm making it because in my jungle landscape, the flowers in the jungle are gonna be drawn pretty big because we have to make it look like it's something that's closest to us, right? So I teach them how to do different types of flowers and these flowers kinda can be more difficult or they can be easier. And then I tell them to make a roll of flowers going all the way across. Those flowers are gonna come up to the dashed line though. So for example, if I teach him how to draw a sunflower, I would start all the way over on this side and I would tell him to make a half circle, probably halfway up to that dotted line. And then if I'm going to continue my sunflower petals, I'm gonna touch this half circle and I'm going to curve up and I can go just past that dashed line if I want to. And I'm gonna curve and come back down and touch this middle circle. So now I'm gonna continue doing that. And you can pause the video if I go too fast. I'm gonna actually move up on this pedal and touch up here. I'm gonna curve out, come down to the middle circle. Go up on the pedal, curve out, down to the middle circle. And I'm gonna keep doing that until I get all the way to the bottom of my paper. When I get to the bottom on this side, then I'm gonna start over here and I'm going to do it on this side until I go off the side of the page like that. So that actually makes a beautiful looking huge sunflower for my jungle and I can even put some dots in there if I want to, okay? So I'm gonna show you some other types of flowers. Some kids choose to do sunflowers all the way across. And if you wanna do that, that's fine. Sometimes this flower is too hard for some kids. So I switch it up. So I say, okay, so if that's too hard, you can make a curve like this that goes a little bit above that dashed 
pencil line that I made. And then you can kind of make a zigzag line in there like this, and it's going to look like a big tulip. Another flower you could do, I'm gonna move over a little bit, is I tell him to kind of make a big U again like this, but make one side of the U a little higher. And then starting at this side of the U, I kind of go around and I make an oval, just to kind of make this look like an open flower. And then I make two lines kind of popping up like this. It looks like one of those flowers that when it rains, it traps water down here and then bugs get trapped and then the flower eats it. <laughs> or maybe I'll make kind of a rose type of flower. I'll make an oval here. And then kids just kind of make these little lines like this as they go around. But as they go around and start getting bigger, then they start curving and they start touching like this. And then they just keep doing it and they get bigger as they go out and they keep getting bigger and wider until they touch and go off the bottom and it looks like a rose. So if you wanna do tulips all the way across, you totally can. If you wanna do sunflowers all the way across or kind of switch it up, it's up to you. But you're doing flowers all the way across this bottom row. And they don't have to touch because we're about to fill it in with these big jungle leaves and that's what's going to make it look really jungly. So now what kids often do when they do the jungle leaves is they accidentally draw through something else. So for example, if I was going to draw a leaf like this, then they take another leaf and they draw right through it like that. And then it looks really confusing and we don't want to do that. So the way I tell kids to make leaves at the bottom is a really simple shape, the shape you just saw me do, but I just tell them to touch a flower, curve up and out, curve down back to the flower, and then put a line in the middle. And that's it. And the bigger you make the leaves, obviously the faster this space is gonna be filled. If you make all your leaves super tiny, then this could obviously take a little while. So I always say it's a jungle, make things big, right? So we're gonna to touch this flower. Now the rule is if you hit another leaf or another flower, you have to stop. I'm gonna jump out on the other side and then draw the line in the middle. And I'm gonna keep doing that. I'm gonna draw out and you can make your leaves going different directions, make a line up the middle. Even in these little spaces, I'm gonna go out, out, line up the middle, out, out, line up the middle and then it looks really cool. It really actually does look very jungly. So I'm just gonna keep doing that all the way across my bottom level. And when I hit something, I always stop. Now sometimes here, kids think that they have to always stop when they hit that dashed line at the top. You don't wanna stop. You can go past and go through that a little bit. That pencil line, that, I, that dashed line that I made there, I'm gonna now erase it, right? Um, typically I have kids erase it after this is all sharpied, but I'm just gonna erase it now just because for the rest of this drawing, I kinda don't want it there anymore. Um, but now that's gonna go. And when we paint it, we won't even see that that was even there in the first place. So now I'm gonna to go to level two. Level two is ocean level. So now I'm looking at this fold, the middle fold that was in the middle of the paper. And there are certain types of lines that I can do for the ocean. For example, I can make big waves kind of spiraling out. I could do a line that just looks like simple water or I could do a different type of wave. So you're gonna watch me kind of make the top line of my water first. And then you could do something easier or simpler than what I do. I'm gonna go out and I'm gonna curve under and around like that for a spiral. It's gonna look like an ocean wave. So I'm gonna to touch now, and I'm just gonna do this again all the way across. Now, some kids, when they learn how to do this, they really like how that looks, and they just wanna do it over and over again until they get to jungle level. If you wanna do that, that's fine. Some kids try this, and it's too hard for them. And I say, if it's too hard, when you go to do your next line down, you could just do a line like this, where it swoops down and points up, right? Like a simple water line that we learned how to do when we were in kindergarten or preschool, it just swoops down and up. Or some kids kind of switch it up even a little bit more than that. They kind of curve out and curl back in, almost like a letter C, and they make a wave like this. Now I'm gonna be honest, this is the hardest line for my kids. They kind of have a hard time not making that look like a perfect triangle going up, 
but that is another option. When you get to jungle level, you wanna stop. You don't wanna go into your flowers, obviously. So again, you could have taken this line and just repeated it over. You could have taken the middle line and repeated it over and over, but you kind of started from that middle line and now you're back down to kind of jungle level. All right, so now I'm looking up here. The last two levels are land and sky. So in my land level, I'm gonna make this look like big mountains or hills, right? So I'm going to touch all the way over to the left and where I'm gonna go is about halfway up the top now. I'm not going all the way to the top. I'm kind of putting a dot right there. So halfway between the water and the top of the paper. I'm going to take my pencil and I'm gonna curve kind of a bumpy line that comes up and then it kind of starts to go down and notice it's not a perfect triangle and this isn't a perfect line. Then I'm gonna stop. Then I'm gonna move up a little bit. I'm gonna go up and down, and this one I want to be more like a swooping hill, right? So I kind of made it a little less bumpy and a little more curved. And then I'm gonna touch in the middle of this one, and I'm gonna go up, and I'm gonna go all the way to the side of the paper, but let's say I want this to be hmm, maybe a volcano. So I'm gonna draw an oval here, and then on the other side of the oval, this is gonna swoop down. So this is land level. And we'll put some lines in this that kind of make it look like land. You can do some zigzags or some wavy lines to make it look rocky. Or you could do some lines like this to even make it kind of look like farmland even. Why you would put a farm at the base of a volcano, I, I don't know, but you could kind of do that too if you wanted to. And these lines would go all the way down until they touched ocean level and then they would kind of stop. So you could do that as well, right? Maybe I'll fill that in a little bit more there. So we got our mountains and our farmland and our volcano, right? So now I'm gonna do the sky. And in the sky, I'm going to put a sun, just picking somewhere. And this, I very much want it to look like a half circle. It shouldn't look like a mountain or a hill. That should look like kind of a round sun shape. I'm going to go straight up for a ray of the sun and then I'm gonna kind of do a couple here. Now I have my kids do it with rulers. I'm just gonna freehand it though today. These lines would go all the way off the paper like that. That's the one thing is if you have it off to more to one side, you're gonna have a long line on the other side. That's all right. Maybe to add some interest, I'm gonna add some fun lines in between these. So maybe I'll add some zigzags going out to the edge of the paper and then a wave in this one. Like that, ooh, that's, that's kind of a cool looking sky, right? All right, so now this is drawn, and if you drew it all in pencil, you wanna Sharpie it or go over it with a black crayon because the next step is watercolor painting it. All right, boys and girls, so now for painting this, I'm gonna use watercolors. This painting is basically a giant color wheel, and we're starting with the reds and the purples in the bottom here, and then we're gonna go to the blues here for the ocean and then we go to the greens and maybe even some browns for the land and then we go to these colors for the sky and if they bleed together you know it won't really matter because we're going in color wheel order so starting down here i'm going to go with the reds so in my watercolor palette i've got a magenta which is kind of a reddish pink and um, i've got kind of a bright red and an orange red now kids always say, but what about the leaves? Aren't we gonna paint the leaves green? Well, not in this one, because if the reds and the greens bleed together, the color that you're gonna get is brown. So again, our goal in this is trying to kind of line this up like a color wheel. And I tell my kids, always add a lot of water to your watercolor paint. So you can kind of see me loading it in there. I'm gonna take my red, and this is kind of what I tell them. I say, take a color and trace over the top of your flowers first, just with one or two colors. So now I'm gonna go up this leaf and around it like that. And then I'm going up the top of my tulip. And this is really different than, you know, kids are used to painting. Kids wanna take it one shape at a time and paint things in one shape at a time. But what I'm doing is I'm creating a border. So as I'm following that black line that traces everything at the top, I'm kind of making a line that says, don't paint above that line. So below this line, I can use any type of magenta, any type of pink or red that I want, 
and I'm just gonna paint this all in and let those colors bleed together. If you rub the paint too much and you lose your Sharpie lines, you just wanna add a little bit more water. Now see what that top line is doing? It's acting like a border. In other words, it's not going to let any of the wet paint out of it as long as you kind of don't go past that line. I'm even gonna add a little purple. Ooh, that looks a little dark. So I'm gonna add a little bit of water and thin it out so I can see my Sharpie line again. All right, so that finishes jungle level. And again, we're kind of down here in this range on the color wheel. So now we're gonna move up and we're gonna go to ocean level and ocean level is gonna be blue and blue greens. And I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna take my watercolor paint, rub my blue, and I'm gonna trace the top of the ocean line. Now in my watercolor kit, I have different shades of blue. I have a blue green, a turquoise, a dark blue, and I'm just gonna mix it up again. I'm gonna kind of take those blues and I'm gonna start and I'm gonna go down because I'm kind of letting that dry a little bit. And I'll take some blue green, mix it in there, maybe some turquoise, and just slowly work my way down to jungle level. Now when I get down to the jungle, I am gonna be kind of careful. I get kids who kind of love mixing these colors together and they're not paying attention and they just go right over their flowers. So when you get down to jungle level, you do kind of want to be a little careful. You're going to kind of carefully kind of trace between these things. And if it bleeds a little bit, like you see it doing with mine, I think that's okay. Again, this is kind of like a big color wheel painting. So if it bleeds a little bit, that could potentially even look kind of cool. If you really don't want it to bleed like that, then you have to let that top line that you painted first completely dry before you put your blues in. But I do always tell my kids the classic trick too. If you don't like it when your watercolor paint bleeds, there is a way to fix that. And all you do is you take a Kleenex and you dab it. That can kind of stop a bleed in its tracks and it can kind of make it lighter so that you kind of can't tell that it bled as much. All right, so now I'm gonna move on to land level. In land level, I have multiple greens here, a light green, a dark green, or a brown. And so I'm going to make this kind of look like a Rocky Mountain. I'm gonna add some browns. And again, I'm going to kind of start by tracing that top line there, kind of like that. But this one's a little different because I want this one to look green and I want this one to look brown. So whereas we kind of let these mesh a little bit, I'm gonna kind of paint these a little bit more separately, but it's up to you. Maybe I'll add a little green in there too to my mountain. Ooh, there we go, nice. Okay, the last level is the sky level. And if there is one area where you really want this to dry before you do the next level, it's now. Because this level has the lightest colors. It has oranges and yellows. And even if it bleeds and the greens and the browns go into the sky, because oranges and yellows are such light colors, even if you dab it with your Kleenex, it's probably still gonna show up. So now I'm just gonna let this sit for a little while. All right, now that that's dried a little bit, now I'm gonna go to the sky. And there we go, boys and girls. There is my beautiful jungle landscape. So I hope you enjoyed this lesson from Art Recycled. I look forward to seeing you next time. See ya.